this video, we will discuss CAN Flexible Data Rate, or CANFD, introduce the Optilizer Mocha FD, a development tool for CANFD from K2L, and present the software options that are available for users of the Optilizer Mocha FD, Optilizer Studio, and K2L bus. Now let us briefly discuss CANFD. On the left-hand side, we see a schematical illustration of a CAN system the way it has been in use for more than 20 years. In this example, it consists of three devices. There are a few important characteristics of CAN. CAN is a two-wire bus. It uses message broadcasting. This means that all the nodes in the network receive messages that are sent over the network. CAN applies priority-based multi-master access. Every node can be a master in CAN. Which node is the master for a certain point in time is decided with the help of the identifier fields in the frames that are to be transmitted. Standard CAN comes with two main limitations. The data rate is limited to 1 megabit per second, which has to do with the aforementioned priority-based multi-master access and how the bus is granted to nodes that want to send a message at the same time and compete for the bus. In order to resolve these kind of situations, all the nodes that want to send a message send their frame ID to the bus. The sender with the lowest ID wins the bus. For this procedure, signal level changes have to travel along the entire bus and back limiting the data rate. As you can see from the frame structure, the normal CAN frame offers up to 8 bytes that are protected by a 15-bit CRC field, which leads to good robustness. But a payload of 8 bytes per frame is not considered sufficient nowadays. At the beginning of this decade, Bosch came up with a next-generation CAN called CAN Flexible Data Rate, or CANFD, which tackles the aforementioned limitations of CAN. Data rates can be greater than 1 megabit per second, and the payload of the frame was extended up to 64 bytes. This is achieved through a different frame structure and by allowing to switch to a higher bitrate during the transmission of payload and CRC, as indicated by the red background. The physical layer, however, remains the same, which allows CAN and CANFD frames to transmit over the same network. However, for CANFD communication, suitable transceivers and controllers are required. Additionally, during the development of an automotive ECU or system, appropriate tools are a must. This goes without saying. In terms of hardware interfaces for CAN-FD, the Optilizer Mocha FD might be the right choice. As you can see from the picture, the Optilizer Mocha FD is part of a family of devices reaching from the Optilizer Mocha CL, featuring six standard CAN and six LIN interfaces, to the Optilizer Mocha Compact with six standard CAN, six LIN, one FlexRay and one MOST interface. We will look in greater detail on the next slide at the interfaces of the Optilizer Mocha FD for standard CAN, LIN and CAN FD developments. The Optilizer Mocha FD is equipped with six LIN interfaces and six CAN interfaces. Two of these interfaces can be configured as CAN FD, CAN High Speed, CAN Low Speed or Single Wire CAN. In terms of CAN FD, ISO and non-ISO CRC calculation is supported. The accuracy of the CAN-FD timestamps is below 1 microsecond. The connection to the PC is implemented with USB 2. Additionally, the Mocha FD has a trigger interface as well as a relay in place. Now let us talk about the two main use cases of the Optilizer Mocha FD during the development. As the picture indicates, the first use case of the Optilizer Mocha FD is to trace and to analyse what is going on on the bus. The Mocha FD interfaces directly to the CAN FD bus. On the other side, it is connected via USB to the notebook that is running K2L's development software, Optilizer Studio, or the programming API K2L bus that comes with the Optilizer Mocha FD. The second use case goes beyond pure analysis. Here, a CAN-FD node is replaced or simulated by an Optilizer Mocha FD and Optilizer Studio and a custom application based on K2L bus respectively. We will see both software options subsequently. 
We will start with Optilizer Mocha FD together with Optilizer Studio. We can now see some screenshots of an expressive demo we showed recently at a trade show. In the foreground, we see an Optilizer Mocha FD that is connected via CAN to a Prey iDrive and via CAN FD to a CAN FD evaluation board from Microchip. The Optilizer Mocha FD is connected additionally via USB to a PC that is running Optilizer Studio, as you can see from the computer screen in the background. The smaller window on the PC is from a Pico Technology oscilloscope that is attached to the Microchip Evaluation Board. It shows the CAN-FD frames that are transmitted over the CAN-FD bus. The Optilizer Studio shows the board rate of the CAN-FD data phase. In this demo, the transmission speed during the data phase of the CAN-FD communication is changed with the help of the Prey iDrive. When you observe the tachometer in Optilizer Studio and the oscilloscope window, you can see that the frame duration is shrinking with higher board rates in the data phase. In order to give you a first-hand experience of how easy it is to set up and use the Optilizer Mocha FD hardware interface from Optilizer Studio, we are now looking at the setup that is depicted on this slide. As you can see, the two CAN FD interfaces of the Optilizer Mocha FD are connected with the help of a two-wired cable and a breakout adapter. We now want to send some CAN FD messages from interface 2 to interface 6. Now we come to the Optilizer Studio graphical user interface. The first thing we want to look at is the device manager, which can be used to change settings of the hardware interfaces that are connected to the PC. For the CAN2 interface of the Optilizer Mocha FD device, the transceiver type can be selected. When the CAN FD transceiver is selected, the board rate for the arbitration phase and the board rate for the data phase can be chosen. Furthermore, it can be decided if ISO or non-ISO CRC calculations should be used. If you want to change the bit timing, you can do this as well in the device manager. For the time being, we will keep the default values. As you can see from the trace window on top in the middle, no messages are transmitted at the moment. We can change this by defining activities in the activity view. In order to send CANFD messages, we define a send message activity, select the hardware interface, the message type, and the CAN ID. With the bitrate switch checkbox, we can choose if the message should be transmitted with a higher board rate during the data phase or not, and we can define the payload length. Afterwards, we can edit the payload of the message. When the send button is clicked, a corresponding CAN-FD frame is transmitted through interface 2. When we look at the trace view, we see the messages that are received through interface 6. The messages that were sent are filtered out to simplify matters. In Optilizer Studio, we can also make use of CAN description, or DBC files, in order to define CAN-FD messages that are to be sent and for disassembly. In order to demonstrate this, we create another send message activity that is executed in a loop. But instead of directly inserting the CAN ID, we simply use the information that is contained in the DBC file. This information can be accessed by pressing Control and Space. As you can see, there is only one CANFD data message defined in our DBC, called Status, and we just select it. As a result, the signals of the frame become available and can easily be changed. In order to get a proper loop, we need to add a delay after the send message command and define the number of loop iterations. By clicking the start button, we can initiate the loop and the messages are displayed in the trace view. We can use the DBC information from the DBC file in the trace view as well by enabling symbolic names, as you can see from the summary column in the trace view.
One last topic we want to look at is what happens when we disable ISO CRC at CAN Interface 6 and we restart the loop. As you can see, CRC errors are indicated in the trace view, which of course is no surprise. So far, we have explained how Optilizer Mocha FD can be used with K2L's Optilizer Studio software that should cover all the standard use cases during the development process. If you have very specialised use cases, you have another option. You can use your Optilizer Mocha FD device with a custom application based on the K2L Bus API. K2L Bus is a .NET dynamic link library developed with C Sharp. On the right hand side you see the layers of the .NET framework. At the bottom is the operating system. One layer above there is a runtime environment that executes intermediate code. The second highest layer represents class libraries that can be employed during the development of the actual .NET applications. K2L Bus is an example of a library that can be used for the development of custom .NET test applications that control devices of the Optilizer Mocha family. On the left-hand side, you see a small excerpt of the classes that are contained in K2L Bus. Intimidating, right? The good news is that in order to implement a custom test application, you do not need to be familiar with the entire library. Let's assume we want to implement a custom application to send a CANFD message with our Optilizer Mocha FD. For this purpose, only a handful of classes contained in K2L Bus are needed. The first step is to create an object of type device environment. This object represents the PC we are currently working with. When the Optilizer Mocha FD is connected via USB to the PC, we can use the device environment object to receive an object of type device base. This device base object represents the Optilizer Mocha FD. Now we zoom into the Optilizer Mocha FD and ask for a transceiver base object that represents one CAN-FD transceiver in the hardware. CAN configuration and message transmitter objects are needed to set the board rates and make the preparations for sending a CAN-FD message. The actual message is defined in a CAN-FD data message object. After we have completed a dry exercise and understand the general procedure of how a CANFD message can be sent, we are ready to walk through a simple Visual Studio project. In this project, the first thing we need to do is to make K2L bus available through using directives. Then we create a device environment object that represents the PC, as discussed before and use this object to receive all the Mocha devices that are connected to the PC. Then we iterate through these devices and look for the first Optilizer Mocha FD for CANFD analysis and simulation, which is then called MyMocha. The device environment and the MyMocha objects are used to create two objects that represent the transceivers at CAN interfaces 2 and 6. After this, the two transceiver objects are used to create two objects that can be used to configure the two interfaces. As you can see, the interfaces are configured for CANFD with an arbitration board rate of 500 kilobit per second and a data phase board rate of 2 megabits per second. In order to get a text message on the console when a message is received at interface 6, we can register the function CANTransceiver message received that is automatically called when this event occurs. We see the function at the bottom. One of the last things we need to do before we're good to go is the definition of the CANFD frame that is to be transmitted. In doing so, a corresponding object is created and the ID as well as the payload are specified. For this simple example, we transmit the above defined message in a loop and we will wait for 1000 milliseconds after every message. When we start the program, we can see the text messages with the payload in the console. Thank you.